Hey guys, it's Harleywood. Welcome back. All right, last week we were out at the range and we had the Desert Tech SRS A2 Covert. That's a bad little package, man. That thing is sick. What you didn't see was I had this out there also. Now this is my new hunting rifle for this year. This is the Bergara B14 Wilderness. We're not actually gonna review this today. I've already done a decent amount of shooting with it. It's chambered in 6.5 PRC, not Creedmoor. So be on the lookout for this review in the upcoming weeks. But today we're gonna take a look at this Crimson Trace scope. Now, while I was down at my hunting property, um, I did try to get this dialed in and I couldn't figure out my groups were all over the place. What I ended up finding out was I mounted this. My dad was over here, we were talking in the shop and I mounted this, I locked tighted the rings down and I just could not figure out why my groups were so inconsistent. Well, what I forgot to do was <laughs> tighten the, the rings down onto the rail. And so it was just walking all over the place. Um, but that said, I had the rings that were a little bit taller and I didn't like it. The cheek rest had to go up way too high. I didn't like it. So these are worn rings, some of the best in my opinion. Um, I'll post a link in the description below to these, but I brought them down. I got the, I got the one set lower. So anyway, we're here to take a look at this Crimson Trace scope here today. Uh, historically in the past, I have been a Nikon guy. I have Nikon scopes on almost everything, but Nikon is getting out of the rifle scope game as of about a year ago. So it's forced me to look for other options. So when I got this Bergara, I started looking around out there. This was very competitively priced. I love the reticle on it. This is actually my first, first focal plane scope and I dig it. Um, we'll get into a little bit more of that. But first, let me go ahead and sight this back in. Now, when I was at deer camp, I kept having to run down, check my shots, run back. My heart was racing. I couldn't get the reticle still. I was only shooting 0.75 groups. Today, I'm a little bit smarter and I got my downrange camera on it. So this is from Caldwell. I'll post a link in the description below to this if you wanna check it out. I'm, I'm not running down back and forth. Let's go ahead and get this sighted in. All right, I'm about quarter right. Sorry, I had to go into the settings on this. I forgot I had it set to 30 second record time. So I've upped that. Let's, I, I believe I'm pretty dialed in. Let's go to the center target. Go ahead and hit record. Mm. All right, about a three quarter inch. Let's see what we got here. Looks like right at 0.6, maybe 0.62. All right, let's get into it. Six to 24 by 56, 34 millimeter body tube. It is quarter MOA adjustments per click. And this particular one is the illuminated version. All right, your elevation and windage, super easy to adjust. And I really like that they have the L and the R for your left and right. So when you're behind the gun, you can real quickly see. Now, if you're an avid shooter, you know which way's which. Um, they don't do that on this one, but it's very easy from behind the gun to see the up here, all right? So, and over here on the left side of the gun is your parallax adjustment. It goes from 15 yards to 1,000, and then obviously the infinity. Um, here is your illumination. I'm going to tell you these two switches right here were quite stiff when I first got them. Um, doesn't bother me so much on the parallax one, but the illumination dial here is pretty stiff. And then your zoom adjustment from 6 to 24. This one's pretty tight, not as tight as Nikon has historically been for me, but they also make those throw levers for this. This is the worst part of doing scope reviews is trying to get an accurate depiction of the reticle. So. We'll talk about the reticle and I'll show some screenshots later, but there is your look at it when it is illuminated. And that is at full zoom. This is first focal plane, so the reticle does zoom with the optic. And there it is zoomed all the way back out to six. You can see the size of the reticle changes quite a bit. All right, let's talk about this reticle. I'm gonna roll up a close up on the screen here so you can see it a little bit better. So in terms of your elevation, you have two and a half MOA between the major tick marks. 
in your windage adjustment, you have one MOA between all the minor tick marks, five MOA between the, the more major tick marks, and then you can see the 10 and the 20 are very, very pronounced on there. Uh, it is a 0.5 MOA center dot, all right, at six power. When you zoom in, that dot does get proportionally larger depending on the zoom level. But as you saw, even at 100 yards, which is what we're at right here, I was able to get basically a 0.75 inch group no problem. Uh, spending a little more time behind this rifle, I could probably easily get half MOAs on this thing. On that Desert Tech video, I mentioned you can put anybody behind a quality optic, a quality gun with quality ammunition and make them a better shooter. That whole you can't buy your way to, to being a better shooter thing is, is not true. Obviously, to an extent, right? I mean, you have to do your part. But if you have garbage equipment, you're going to be a garbage shooter. When I first started hunting, I bought, I think it was $149 from Academy, a BSA scope. And um, it was all I could afford at the time. And it was, it was just not very accurate, you know? And when you start moving up into more quality equipment like this, that whole uh, buy once, cry once really starts to become true. And uh, you don't realize it when you're on the lower end of some of these products. Scope measures right at 14 and three quarter inches long and is 32 ounces. Another nice thing is these level lines on the side right here. So it really helps you get your scope more level inside the rings. Typically, I prefer the turret caps that lift and allow you to adjust it, get your zero back and snap them back in. This is a little bit different. You do have to use an Allen wrench in order to undo the caps, turn it to your zero, and then tighten them back down. Not a huge deal, really a personal preference thing. The MSRP on this is about $850, but you're gonna find it all day long. I'm gonna post a link in the description below for about 200 less than that. When you compare that price to some of the you know high-end optics that are out there, and, and when I say high-end, I mean your Night Forces, your Vortex, your EOTex, they're two thousand dollars, all right, uh, for you know something that I would call the equivalent of this. And I'm not opposed to those. In fact, I've got my eye on. I'm, I'm debating between one from Vortex and one from EOTech right now. I'm doing a precision rifle build. A this is obviously a precision rifle, as the uh, the caliber would imply. Uh, but more with a precision chassis, um, more to come on that. I don't wanna, I don't wanna give that away. This is untested in a battle scenario, whereas you know, Vortex has a long pedigree. So I'm certainly not advocating taking this into battle or anything like that, but for precision shooting, something like this, certainly a great option. All right, well, I don't know what else I can say about it, man. This is my first time with a Crimson Trace scope. And so far it's every bit the build quality and the finish that I've come to know from Vortex. I do have a few Vortex scopes and Nikon. Um, first time with a first focal plane scope, say that five times fast. And I, I obviously have not spent near as much time behind one of these as I have second focal plane scope. There's, there's a little bit of a learning curve to it, but for the most part, it, it seems a little bit more intuitive actually. I'm gonna post a link in the description below to where you can get this scope. If you did like this video, guys, do me a favor, hit subscribe down below, hit that like button, hit the bell icon so you know when I publish new videos. I've got lots more to come, and I'll see you in the next one.